Okay, so let me sh share my screen. Okay. Okay, can everyone see my slides? Yes. I guess. Yep. Okay. So, hi everyone. Thank you for having me. Thank you for sending me this invite. I'm very excited to talk to you about Dinoify. Dinoify is a build tool that I made for bring Dino support to NPM modules. But before I start, let me introduce myself real quick. I am Joseph Garon. I'm a French software engineer. I studied applied mathematics in France, then computer science at the Polytechnic University of Turin in Italy. After my degree, I created CMSIM, which is a telecom company, and we do everything in TypeScript. From an entrepreneurial point of view, uh, I like to have my code run everywhere. I hate to have to maintain multiple version of the same code to run on Android, iOS, the web. It's a nightmare to keep everything in sync and it's a big waste of time. So my, what I like the most is to enable code to write it once and enable it to run everywhere. So as I'm a fan of TypeScript and uh, Dinoify is the hot new thing, my way of uh, getting involved was to build this compatibility layers layer. So Dinoify, what it does very concretely is it takes as input uh, Dino, um, TypeScript code base that was uh, meant to uh, target Node and or the web and spit out a modified version of the source files that are ready to be deployed as a Dino module. So Dinoify is for NPN module author or maintainers that want to bring first class citizen Dino support to their module and do so without having to maintain the port or without having to introduce breaking changes. Let's see what it does in practice. I'm gonna use the pointer. Here is the an input file, so it's a very simple uh, node script. And this is what Dinoify produce as output. So you can see that this script use dear name, which is a node built in that is not present on Dinoify. So Dinoify will inject this polyfill. It will do it as well for a file system path and find a port for TSMD5. MD5. So this script can run on Dino. And you can see here, this, this can be run directly on Dino and produce this output. And this, after being compiled on uh, to JavaScript with a TypeScript compiler, can be run on Node. So you have the same source uh, that will produce, in the end, distribution for both Node and Dino, which I think is really, really cool. Now, the motivation I found to work on such a project. First is, I think we can all agree that there are a lot of great NPM modules that we would like to be able to use on Dino. Second is, if you want to create a new module today, you have to choose if you want to target Node or Dino. And this is not, this is not an easy choice. Because if you target Node, you're all new already. Uh, everyone is looking toward uh, Dino, so you're missing out a lot of free publicity. But if you target Dino, sure, people are going to be looking at your stuff, but it is very unlikely that they will be using it in production because the user base of Dino is still very, very small. And the third point is for me the more important. I believe that if we want Dino to take off. We need good SDK support. We need the server side libraries of the big company to be able to do payment processing. We need to be able to send push notification to Android and Apple device. And we cannot expect Google or Stripe to care to support uh, Dino we have to make it dead easy for them 
to bring this support if we want this support to happen and uh, someday. So this is what Denoify is trying to do. Uh, proof of concept now. I think EVT is the first module of its, its kind who is fully cross-compatible between Node and Dino. You can find it on the Dino third-party module repository and you can also find it on NPM. EVT is an event management library, very much like RxJS, but it focuses on making the most of the great TypeScript inferent features so that you produce code that is both very readable and very, very type safe. Let me show you the landing page I made for the project. So I'm very happy about EVT that have been made cross compatible with Dinoify, of course, because people are actually starting to use it. Like serious company like Conex uh, is using it everywhere. There's a graph also that say that they are interested by uh, trying it out and if I'm sharing that with you, it's not only to brag, but to say that I think Dino is a great marketing tool for your open source project, for your JavaScript open source project, because EVT got covered by Node Weekly, JavaScript Daily, uh, Dino, Dino Weekly, because it has this support for Dino. People have been trying to play with EVT because it has this support for Dino. And after, people that are actually using it are, are consuming the NPM module. But it's really cool to have this cross compatibility. So you can use the marketing opportunity of Dino and provide a way for people to use it in, in real life. If you want to try to do something like that, I have made a very documented guide on how to start a project from scratch that you want to deploy on both Dino and Node. If you go to the Dinoify uh, repo, which is uh, the, the repo of the build tool, and you scroll down, you're gonna find Dinoify CI, which is a collection, which is a CI setup to uh, make it very easy for you to write, to build a module from scratch that you will deploy on both uh, NPM and Dino. And yeah, it's, uh, it's very step by step. I've even open sourced the the code for the um, for the landing page you see there and how to make a a cool documentation site. So if you feel like you can try and replicate something like EVT, or if you don't want to create something from scratch, you can uh, try and denoify something that already exists. There is uh, thousands of modules out there, out there that could be denoify if you want to. Uh, technical point now is how denoify handle dependencies. As you must know, Node and Dino have very different way to go about dependencies. On Node, there is a Node uh, package JSON, there is Node module. On Dino, it's everything is uh, URL. So with uh, Browserify, you just run it and it will bundle all the dependencies and inject the poly files needed and uh, you can run this on the browser. Dinoify is not there uh, quite yet. It doesn't work out of the box like that. You have to provide a Dino port for every and each of your uh, dependencies. But bear with me, this is not as hard as it sounds. You have three ways you can do it. The first way is the naive way of uh, writing a Dino port of your dependency manually. You don't have to port the whole thing, you just have to port the bytes that are needed for your module to run. But I very much discourage you to do that unless it is the very last uh, option because it's very time consuming and it opens the gate to inconsistencies in the way your module will run on Dino compared to other runtimes and we don't want that. The second option is the, the option that I encourage you to apply is to use Dinoify recursively. 
meaning. If you only use denoified module, like for example, EVT, you don't have to do anything. Everything will work out of the box like it does with Browserify. But there is very few of those denoified module out there. So you have to, if you want to do it, you have to take the repo of your dependency, fork it, and set up Denoify yourself and use this uh, fork as a dependency. You can do that recursively and cover all your dependency tree this way. I know that this won't be feasible for all projects. This is why we have a third option, which is to wait for the community to do the work for you. You can wait for someone, once someone denoifies something, it do, it do it not only for him, but for everyone else, because Denoify is consuming a database of known ports. So I be monitoring what people are Denoifying and I add this uh, to the list. So I think with this model, we could reach a point where most of the commonly used NPM module are there. And so it work out of the box. But uh, full disclosure, Denoify is very much work in progress still. There is many limitation to this day. And first of which being the incomplete uh, node built-in API support. You can see here the current state of the support. So this is not something that I do myself. It's part of the core uh, Dino uh, standard library. So you can wait for this, uh, this list to be filled up or you can get involved and do part of it yourself. What would you, why would you do that? There's three reasons. The first one is because it's a very fun and instructive way to understand how Dino work compared to Node. The second one is that it will make you a Dino contributor which is something cool to have on your GitHub profile. And the third one is it will get your module supported faster. Let's say that, for example, your module is using HTTP and you need it. You can take all that and only the part of HTTP that you are needing. You don't have to do the whole thing. You can just do a, a small feature, submit a pull request, and they will be very happy to merge. Uh, they are very, very open to pull requests. If you choose to do it, don't forget to grab the types definition of node before, and it will give you the roadmap of what you have to do. You just have to implement using the Dino API and after to submit a pull request. So uh, this is for me. I encourage you to go on the Dinoify uh, repo see if the current limitation that I list are deal breaker for you today. If they are, then wait and uh, come back later. Uh, if they are not, everything is very well documented, so you can try and denoify stuff yourself. If you have any problem, don't hesitate to reach me. I'm very happy to help you, assist you in, uh, in setting up denoify with whatever you're trying to do. Thank you very much for your attention. That, that's Thank it. you very much, Joseph.